Coming up next on Hands On Windows, we're gonna take a look at Microsoft Copilot in Windows 11, but not like you know it as a sidebar, but as an app. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello everybody, and welcome back to Hands On Windows. I'm Paul Thrott. And I'm here in Mexico for some reason, but uh, we're going to talk about Windows today. So a few episodes back, we talked about Windows 11 24H2, and I showed off some of the new features because this is a staggered release and parts of it will be available semi-immediately and parts of it are coming later in the year. And one of the things I didn't have at the time of that recording was the new version of Copilot. But if you have installed Windows 11 24H2, um, if, and if you haven't, I have directions for how to do so on throughout.com. It's pretty straightforward. Just download an ISO run up and run setup. Um, and you agree to get the preview updates, right? That come out on the Tuesday of week D every month. You will have received a cumulative update that among other things adds this new version of Copilot. And so this is, you know, <laughs> multiple versions of Copilot and just it's been under a year. They've moved the icon around on the taskbar multiple times. They're doing it yet again. Um, at the time of that recording, the Copilot icon was at the far side of the taskbar past the clock. Now, because it's an app, it will be pinned by default alongside apps like Edge, uh, File Explorer, Microsoft Store, etc. And you can unpin it and do all that stuff. So, it's, it's an app, right? Um, so let's see what this looks like, right? So when you run this new version of Copilot, it comes up as a windowed app. It is an app. You can do all the app type things, maximize it, use Snap, et cetera. In fact, you probably get the little previews here, yep. So all that stuff works. Um, so you get all the app stuff. So that's kind of neat. It's not a pain. You don't have to worry about resizing it or tiling it with other things or different display modes. It's just an app, right? This is maybe the way it should have been the whole time. Um, but it's also a web app, right? So like the original versions of Copilot over the past year, um, it's built using Microsoft Edge and web technologies. And so it's a PWA essentially, right? And you can tell that because you get this little edge menu up here, and this gives you uh, some capabilities related to web apps, but maybe most importantly, it gives you access to your extension. So even though it's an app, it also has these kind of Microsoft Edge capabilities, which are pretty good. Um, less obviously, it also supports uh, web browser style zoom. So you can't see me doing this, but control plus will zoom in, right? And make it nice and big. Control minus will go down and control zero goes back to 100%. And that's actually kind of an awesome uh, capability, I think, you know, that most apps don't have. So if you're familiar with the old um, call pilot pane, you probably are looking at this and saying this looks different a little bit and it, it's a lot less busy. It's more of a minimalist uh, UI, simplified UI. Um, it has less going on, right? So there's this kind of navigation pane over here. This will fill up over time with all of your previous uh, prompts, I guess is the term to use there, um, which itself is an advantage over the previous version, right? Uh, there was a way to go back and get to those things. Actually, they're called chat, I guess, chats in the context of Copilot, but um, it was hidden behind a, a different button and now it's just kind of out there and available. So I think that's pretty nice. Um, it also has some of the features that were missing from that pane before, like the custom GPTs. That's one of the things I talked about in that last episode. So you can go in here and kind of tailor it to any of the existing GPTs. There only, there, there's the main one, the normal one, and then there are four additional uh, GPTs, uh, custom chatbots, essentially. It supports plugins, right, which the other one did. And I don't think there's too much different here, although this phone plugin is new, or new-ish anyway, and uh, this allows you to ground a chat in information that's coming from your phone. So for example, you could search your phone for a particular person who's in your contact database or whatever, um, and find it quickly that way. I don't have it set up for that, but that's how that would work. And then it also supports this notebook uh, feature, which is not new either, but uh, the difference between a notebook and a standard chat is actually a, a bunch of differences. But um, the big one to me is that this thing is uh, will accept much bigger prompts and you can edit it in place. You don't do a prompt, see what it does, edit the prompt, do it again. You actually edit it in real time with the Copilot and you construct the thing until you get it to where you want it to be. So it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting alternative to the standard chat interface. 
Um, the other big change here to me anyway is this little conversation style drop down. So in the previous pane and on the web too, I believe, and also in the edge sidebar version of this, you actually get three choices here. And, and here you're only seeing one, which is balanced. And balanced is the one that Microsoft wants you to use for just typical chats, right? But if we go in here and choose a designer, which is their image creation tool, right? Um, you'll see that it has changed to creative, right? Because you, you, you want to be more creative <laughs> when you're creating an image, right? So um, depending on the GPT that you choose, uh, you might see different things here, but you can't actually go here and, well, you can now from here, but if I were to go to a normal co-pilot chat, and actually let me just do it this way here and get started. Now, even though I used creative before, it's not there now, right? So it depends on which view you're looking at or how, how you're doing this. Okay. So as far as this thing goes, I would say, I think maybe actually um, designer might be the than the best one to choose uh, just because it's visual. But uh, this works exactly as it does on the web and elsewhere. I think the big general change aside from it being an app is that now this thing is feature complete compared to the other versions of Copilot. Remember there were missing features before, like I said earlier. Um, and so it's also a superset, right? Because you get those Windows integrations where you can tell it to change the theme and all that kind of stuff. But I'll just do it. Uh, I already wrote this up, so I'm just going to co copy and paste this in if I can figure out how to do that. Um, I guess I'll just write it. But, uh, you know, create a, a photo of a lonely cabin in the deep woods um, with animals all around. So this will be a familiar experience if you've ever used Copilot. I actually use this kind of thing almost every single day. Um, it is, <laughs> it's not working because of course. Oh, here it goes. Good. Um, yeah, this is what I saw before. So when you do this on the web, you actually get a slightly different interface here. It looks like the Windows flag with four different panes. And um, when I first saw this version of it, I thought, oh man, it's only going to create one image. But actually, once it, as you can see, for some reason it went scary on me, but um, <laughs> it, it does create four images. So it actually does work exactly as it does um, on the web. So when you click one of those images, you go to the Microsoft uh, Designer website, or Copilot, it's copilot.microsoft.com, but it's the Microsoft Designer site. And you can see this image in kind of higher resolution. Um, it's square because I'm not paying for Copilot with this account that I'm using here. Uh, and if you click Customize, you get some interesting um, choices here through the Microsoft Designer web app, right, which you can install as a web app. I'm not going to do that. but. Um, this is a whole kind of image design tool. It's designed for people who are doing social media and have brands or whatever it might be. Um, but you can add all these little, you know, doodads to it. Um, some of the more interesting stuff in here is you can add shapes and uh, images and so forth. You can add text, like if you want to make a kind of a headline for it. I'm not going to actually do that, but uh, uh, you can add a brand if you have a branding kit with your certain colors and so forth for social media. You can do all that kind of stuff. So kind of a nice little interface. It's not quite Photoshop or anything like that, but kind of a Canva style. Uh, interface for um, taking an image that was generated with AI, customizing it to your needs, et cetera, and then you can output. Um, if you do sign in, I was thinking about doing this, but I think it would just take too much time. But if you sign in for, with an account that is a paid Copilot account, so if you have Copilot Pro, which is what I have, or Copilot for Microsoft 365, um, you actually have additional capabilities both in Designer and in that app. In Windows, uh, for example, these images would be 16 by 9 by default, though you could go back to 4 by 3. Um, high resolution, you get more tokens, et cetera, more performance, and uh, all that kind of stuff. But you can see because I did do this chat, or pro, I think it was a prompt, but it, it, comes, it comes into the navigation pane, the list of chats, um, and you can um, kind of keep track of all your stuff here from the same interface, which is nice because... I, depending on the way you access Copilot in the past, I feel like I was losing things. I would have it generate, usually images in my case, and then I'd go to find them in a list of the chats and I couldn't see them in each location. But I feel like with this change, now they're, um, they're making it fully compatible with the web. So I think that's, I think that's starting to work um, correctly. So that's mostly, that's most I would say of what's new. I can just click on new chat here, go back to the basic uh, beginning. We're back to balance. So it's just doing a regular co-pilot chat, not a designer chat. Um, if you want this now, uh, you're on 23H2, probably like most people. Um, you'll have to do that install of the ISO uh, from the release um, 
preview channel in the Windows Insider preview. Um, like I said, I have instructions on my website. It's not difficult. It's not particularly risky. Um, you'll get normal security updates every month like everyone else. So Microsoft supports 22H2, 23H2, and now 24H2. So you'll just be on the stable channel. Your PC does not go into the Windows Insider program or anything like that. Um, but you'll want to keep it up to date. So uh, run Windows Update and keep running it until there are no more updates because you'll have to reboot a few times. Um, but you'll get the version of Windows where um, the Copilot uh, icon disappears from the taskbar over here and then appears over here. <laughs> so you'll get this uh, kind of windowed app experience, which I think is pretty cool. So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, we will have new episodes of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.tv slash HOW. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back next week. And thank you especially to all of our cl Club Twit members. We love you. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. All right.